Susan Silver, a writer for the Mary Tyler Moore Show and author of the forthcoming book, Hot Pants in Hollywood, <laughs> greatest title ever, by the way, <laughs> Sex, Secrets, and Sitcoms, joins us on the story. I did five scripts, were always things that had happened to me, myself, and, you know, it was what I was living through at the time I was married, was the beginning of feminism, and uh, because I was very fortunate in my business, we had a union, so everybody got the same pay, uh -huh. but there were a lot of other issues that had to be dealt with, but we just sort of did it as what was going on in our lives. She was the Mary that we all like to think she was. That's so great to hear, because for so many people, you you know, you never want to be disappointed by someone that you look up and to. And there are a lot of people you can and there be are disappointed. A lot of people, unfortunately, oh, we're going to name happen. names. Boy, are we going to name names? <laughs> You're going to name those in your new book. <laughs> First of all, I went to Northwestern, and then I transferred to UCLA to be closer to the biz. Right. And then I, uh, I was there for years as I was a television writer before I moved to New York. How do you compare living in L.A. versus New York? Oh, such a difference. I mean, I couldn't wait to get out of L.A. because L.A. is all about show business. And you don't know anybody outside of that. Even the guy who comes to fix your shower door will tell you, I did Dolly Parton's shower door last week. Who cares? I wanted to be a writer. I got out of college. I couldn't get a job because I didn't have shorthand and typing. So I had to take speed writing or something. I got a job at a local television station. Then I got a job in casting at an ad agency, a uh, dancer Fitzgerald sample. And then I saw an ad that said, new TV show, looking for casting assistant, and that was Rona Martin's laughing. I'm like Zelig. I have been with, involved with some of the greatest icons of our time. Um, I was the associate producer of the Mort Saul talk show when I got out of college. I didn't even know what it meant to be. Now, he was an intellectual guy who took his stuff from the paper, very smart. He wasn't looking for laughs. He was looking for that aha moment. Lenny Bruce, who I worship and adore, and his mother fixed me up with, if you can oh, believe this. Oh, you went out with Lenny Bruce? I did. And we I have brought, to hear the oh story. Oh, my God. Come this on. Is I, his name was Gary Marshall. He was my mentor and my manager, and he was a comedy icon, too. And he used to say he wanted to be the recess in the school day of comedy. He wanted to be the light, fun, no heavy message, not serious, academic kind of thing. And I look around at all of you, serious, brilliant academicians, and so I'm the recess of this conference. Because the reason I'm here is Lenny Bruce's mother fixed me up with him when I was in college. And I want to go like this and say I'm blonde. There I was, this little scared Jewish virgin, the night I met Lenny Bruce. So this is there's only one person who has their own chapter in my book of all the famous people, that's Lenny Bruce. I have so many women coming up to me today who still feel that she was so influential, but it wasn't really a mission statement. It was just, how do women talk and what do we do in our lives that are different maybe than men? I read uh, that there was a guy, a writer in Chicago who said, or maybe you came up with this, let's get her some sex. No, you know, oh my gosh, I'm going to be, they're going to come after me for that. No, what he said was Mary was undersexed. So I said, well, let's get her some then, you know. So, so we, and so um, how did you do that? Well, I, I also was sort of naive. I thought that you weren't allowed to make anything up, that you had to write from your own life. So every story I came was from my own life. So I kind of did a story where she was being interviewed by this reporter, and she wound up, spending the night with him. So I thought that would sort of say it without really saying it. But she does ask Rhoda, am I undersexed? Oh, that's great. <laughs>